Number 10. Disfigured by War This incredible photograph was taken of a Slovenian anti-fascist resistant fighter named Albina Mali Hosevar. Albina lived between 1925 and 2001 and was wounded three times in combat while fighting to liberate Yugoslavia from between 1941 and 1944. She became a national hero. But what's really amazing about this photograph is that we see what the girl looked like when the war started and how she was changed when the war was finally over. The girl was quite beautiful at the beginning, but after, she was horribly disfigured. One of her eyes was injured, she was missing some teeth, and she had a pretty nasty disfigurement on one side of her face. What makes this so tragic is that she joined the People's Liberation Movement when she was only 16 years old. Before Albina even turned 18, an exploding mine tore her face apart. But despite this, she continued fighting and even working as a nurse for the remaining years of the war. Of course, even though she was disfigured by the war, she still lived a full and happy life as a national hero. She was awarded the Order of the People's Hero inside the category of Women's National Heroes. At the time, it was the highest award one could be given in Yugoslavia. Albina then went on to live until the ripe old age of 75. As for the photograph, it's now a reminder that even when war is over, its scars will never fully heal. Number 9. The First Human Being Photographed This triumphant photograph is from Paris back in 1838 by a man named Louis Daguerre. It's the first photograph ever taken to include a recognizable person. You can see the human standing at the very bottom left of the photograph, on the pavement where the road curves. The person appears to be getting his boots shined in the picture. This is historical for a number of reasons, and should be particularly exciting for photographers and photography enthusiasts. Considering the amazing things we can do with photographs and videos today, it's kind of amazing that it all started with one man taking a photograph from the balcony of his apartment in Paris. To give you an idea of how complicated it was to take a photo back in the 1800s, the exposure time was about 7 minutes. Even though the street would have been super busy with traffic and moving people, everything would have been going so fast that the exposure time couldn't have captured it. That's why only the buildings and the man sitting with his shoes getting shined are in the image. They're the only things that stood still long enough to be photographed. Imagine if you had to wait 7 minutes for your selfie to develop. What's your favorite photograph of all time? Is it one of you and your family, or perhaps a famous event in history? Or is it one of some incredibly natural beauty? Tell me about your favorite photo in the comments below, and then be sure to subscribe to WorldList for more cool videos just like this one. Number 8. Photos of Lincoln Abraham Lincoln was the 16th President of the United States. He was also the first US President to be extensively photographed. Today, we're used to seeing the president all over our phones and TVs, but it never used to be like that. Before Abraham Lincoln, most people didn't even know what the president looked like unless they happened to see him in person. But with the invention of photography in the 1800s and its popularity booming in the 1840s, Lincoln became the first nationally recognized president. And it all started with the earliest confirmed photograph of Abraham Lincoln, reportedly taken in 1846 by photographer Nicholas H. Shepard. It came shortly after Lincoln was first elected to the House of Representatives. The second earliest photograph of Lincoln was taken in 1854 in Chicago, when Lincoln took a photograph for George Schneider, the former editor of an influential anti-slavery newspaper. There were many photographs taken of Lincoln throughout his years in office before being assassinated, but what's really remarkable is that when you look at his younger photographs, all of which are black and white, he doesn't usually look anything like how they portray him in the movies. What's even more fascinating is that all of Lincoln's early photos are missing his notorious top hat. Not only that, but Lincoln doesn't have a single piece of hair on his face until a photo taken on November 25th in 1860. And it wasn't until a photo from February 8th of 1861 that Lincoln had his famous beard. But for all the years before that, he looked incredibly different and had no facial hair at all. Number 7. Photographs of War we see images of modern warfare almost every day on our TV screens, and some people say we've seen so much of it we've become desensitized. But did you know that the first photographs of war came from three wars, all fought within a short period of just 18 years? I'm talking about the Mexican-American War, the Crimean War, and the Civil War. 
the images captured by the very first war photographers revealed a brutal landscape of violence, mass graves, and horrors beyond imagination. What's truly amazing and historical about the first war photographs is that before the power of photography, all we had to memorialize humanity's violent exploits were paintings. And while paintings can be beautiful, there's nothing quite as horrifying or as surreal as looking upon the real thing frozen in time. It's believed that the very first image of war came from an unknown photographer in 1847. The image is kept today at the Amon Carter Museum of American Art. The picture was taken of General Wool in the Calle Real Saltillo, Mexico. The image is incredibly blurry, but you can definitely see the servicemen sitting atop their horses. This was the beginning of the documentation of human brutality. War photographers have been important ever since, and even though photography has gotten better, the images have not gotten any less horrible. Number 6. Medical History Speaking of horrible, before the invention of anesthesia, getting surgery was a pretty nasty business. Just during the 1830s, surgery was a miserable and painful affair that involved smoking a lot of opium and drinking a lot of whiskey. Patients were even punched to the point of unconsciousness so that they could have limbs removed or other nasty things done to them without screaming in agony. In fact, some surgeons became famous for their ability to cut off limbs within a short span of time. And that's where this next photograph comes into play. It captured the very first public image of ether as a surgical anesthetic. The photograph was taken in 1846 at the Massachusetts General Hospital Operating Theater. The room in which the photograph was taken actually became known as the Ether Dome. The photograph was taken at a turning point in medicine, when doctors had figured out how to put a person into a state of unconsciousness so they'd feel no pain during an important operation. What's really funny is that after the experiment with the ether was successful, the surgeon declared to the watching audience, gentlemen, this is no humbug. Which in today's language means, look what I did. Number 5. The Spirit Photographer William Mumler was the great spirit photographer of the 1960s. William took his first spirit photo in 1961 by complete accident. It happened after he took a portrait of himself and noticed the strange image of another person behind him. As far as the story goes, William recognized the blurry person as his dead cousin. This was the start of his journey into spirit photography. William then became extremely famous throughout the next few years for taking photographs of people with their dead relatives' ghosts. He even took a photograph of Mary Todd Lincoln that showed the assassinated president burned into the image behind her. Of course, spirit photography is total nonsense, and by 1969, the police were fed up with Mumler. He was accused of swindling people out of their money, dragged into court, and even included in a book about humbugs, also known as frauds. Some of the images he took are definitely fascinating, especially from a historical standpoint. And he really was the first to link photography with the paranormal. Unfortunately, Mumler eventually went out of business and faded into the pages of history. Only his photos remain as a strange reminder of a strange time. Number 4. Leatherman the Vagabond Creepy photographs from near the 1860s show what life was like for nomads in early America. The star of this particular photograph is allegedly someone known as Leatherman the Vagabond. According to a historical report from Medium.com, Leatherman was a vagabond who became famous for traveling from New York to Connecticut between 1857 and 1889. While it wasn't totally abnormal to be a wandering stranger back in the 1800s, Leatherman was a bit of an oddity. He was mainly known for his bizarre clothing, which he apparently made himself from different patches of leather. During his life as a vagabond, Leatherman returned to the same towns at the same times of year and was quite mysterious. He apparently had a French accent, suggesting he may have been from Canada. He would arrive in a town and locals would give him food and then see him on his way. He became so well known that people along his route knew the exact dates he would show up and they would have food ready for him. And while walking from town to town, Leatherman apparently lived in caves. He was eventually arrested in 1888 because the Connecticut Humane Society thought he was insane, but he didn't stay locked up for long. He was proved mentally sound and then sent on his way. Unfortunately, the Leatherman died the following year in 1889. His body was discovered in a cave in the woods outside the town of Mount Pleasant, New York. Number 3. The Last Samurai And here are the historical photographs you've probably been waiting for. Before the 1800s, Japan was a country ruled by legitimate samurai. These were very real Japanese warriors. But the end of the 1800s saw the end of the samurai. Today, all we have left of these fabled warriors are old photographs. 
the last of which were taken between 1863 and 1900. In these last remaining photographs, you can see the few final samurai that ever wielded power in the nation of Japan. And so far as history is concerned, the samurai died in 1873. It all began with the Meiji Restoration of 1868, when warlords were stripped of their powers and real rulers were put in place under Emperor Meiji. From then on, a real army was created and the samurai were pretty much abolished. The samurai until then had been the only armed force of the nation, and after 1873, they even lost their right to wear a sword in public. This was truly the end of the samurai. There are a lot of striking historical images taken in the final days of the samurai, but perhaps the most fascinating is the photograph of a woman who had been a samurai in the late 1800s. It's unclear the woman's identity, where she came from, or what became of her after the photograph was taken, but it's certainly legit. She had likely been a noble woman trained to be a samurai to defend her home and children while the men were away at war. Number 2. The Reindeer in Murmansk by far the most striking historical image from World War II is the reindeer in Murmansk. The picture shows a gorgeous reindeer startled by bombs being dropped across the land. The photograph was taken by a very famous Soviet photographer, and to this day, it's one of the most visceral wartime photographs ever taken. It speaks to the horrifying separation of man and animal, and the savagery of war. But this photograph is not without its controversy. The problem is that the photographer didn't actually capture the photograph the way you see it now. The picture of the reindeer is legit, but it wasn't until later that the photographer superimposed the aircrafts and the exploding bomb into the image. That's right, it's 100% fake. If you thought photo editing was a new invention, well, you'd be wrong. Photographs could be manipulated even in the 1940s. Nonetheless, the photographer defended his manipulation of the photograph by saying that he had seen a reindeer show up during an air raid but couldn't capture the photograph the way he wanted. So he made it up himself. Number 1. The Oldest Selfie This photograph is the oldest selfie in human history. I don't need to explain to anyone right now what a selfie is. Even the oldest grandmother on earth knows what a selfie is and probably even knows how to take one. But people were doing it far, far before Facebook. The term selfie may only have been added to the Oxford Dictionary in 2013, but the very first selfie ever taken was by a guy named Robert Cornelius back in 1839. He was an American pioneer in photography. Not only did he take the first selfie, but the picture you're looking at right now is one of the first photographs taken of a human being in history. Written on the back of the original photo is, the first light picture ever taken, 1839. The first mirror selfie happened about 60 years later in 1900. The photograph was taken by an unidentified Edwardian woman who snapped her own photograph in a standing mirror using a box camera. By the early 1900s, even teenagers were taking selfies and mailing them to their friends. In 2008, a man living alone in Japan began to notice some very strange happenings in his apartment. Whenever he opened the fridge, there always seemed to be something missing. He began to suspect that maybe he was sleep eating, if that's even a thing, I don't know. It took some time for the man to finally reason that somebody was breaking into his house and stealing his food. So he bought some surveillance cameras and linked them into his smartphone. While at work, the owner of the home checked his kitchen using his smartphone and his new surveillance camera. That was when he captured a woman taking food from his refrigerator and then sitting on his couch and watching his television. After she was done, the woman cleaned up and vanished. The man called the police right away, but even after they arrived at his home, they couldn't find the intruder. It wasn't until the officers checked inside the closet that they found a secret hiding place. It turned out that a homeless woman was living inside this guy's closet, and she'd been there for a year. She apparently snuck in one day when the man forgot to close his front door, then set up shop in a small nook inside the closet, coming down when he went to work so that she could shower, use the toilet, and eat his food. When she was finally discovered, she looked perfectly normal, nicely manicured, and very clean. She was also quite well fed. Number 9. Boyfriend in the Attic Sometimes an ex-boyfriend can be clingy. This is just one of those unfortunate things that you can't always escape during a breakup. But what about an ex-boyfriend living in your attic over 12 years after you broke up? Now that's a stage 5 clinger, people. It's also an extremely ghoulish thing that happened to a woman in South Carolina when she heard a weird bump from her attic and noticed nails sticking out from her bedroom ceiling. She then felt like something wasn't right. 
But it wasn't a poltergeist or a devil making noises in her attic, it was her ex-boyfriend. He had apparently been residing inside her attic for roughly two weeks, ever since he was released from prison. According to Huffington Post, the pair had broken up 12 years earlier, and she never wanted to get back with him even after he had sent her letters from jail promising he'd changed. Apparently, this guy thought that sneaking into his ex's house and then setting up shop in her attic would be a great way to get her back. But what makes this story even more disturbing is that the man had been defecating inside the attic. He was using old cups as a toilet. He also had a bunch of old clothes he had found that he was using for a bed. Unfortunately, when he was discovered, the guy ran out of the house and into the street before the police could arrive. Hopefully, this woman is invested in some better locks. Do you have any scary stories of strangers in your house, or are you always super careful and lock your doors? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one. Number 8. Student Squatter College can be expensive, especially if you're living on campus. Students at Ohio State discovered a horrifying nightmare when it came to light that they had a roommate that they didn't even know about. For the longest time, a group of friends living together thought that a locked door in their basement led to a boring old utility closet. It wasn't until maintenance workers knocked the door down that they discovered a bedroom where an uninvited guest had been living. This would definitely be a big shock to anyone, but perhaps the biggest shock is that the uninvited guest was another university student in his fourth year of studying civil engineering. The room was complete with textbooks, framed photographs, and all the other intricacies of a normal life. After discovering the room, the roommates changed the locks on the door and posted a note asking their house guest to give them a friendly call, which he did later. It turned out that the guy was nice and normal enough, and he'd moved his belongings without a fuss. It's just that he wasn't really supposed to be living in the basement of the house. Number 7. Unwanted Residents a family in Colorado recently arrived home to find a group of strangers had moved into their house, and this is a nightmare situation. After the family left the state for work, they returned to the house that they owned to find random people occupying it. What's even more disturbing is that the family was forced to live in a relative's basement while they tried to regain their house. This is apparently more common and more troublesome than you might think. You can't simply break down the door and throw the people outside, although some people would definitely take that route. The family actually had to win an eviction order in court to get the strangers out of their home, and the squatters fought for their rights to live there tooth and nail. Imagine fighting to live in another person's house. That sounds absurd, but here's the issue. The people who moved in thought that they had legally purchased the home from a man named Alfonso Carrillo, who had since been charged with racketeering and theft. According to CBS Denver, those who illegally bought the home from Alfonso were ultimately charged with trespassing. Apparently, there is some kind of illegal ring that sells homes to people while the owners are out on vacation. So if you see a house being sold for extremely cheap online, you better make sure you talk to a realtor first. Number 6. Horror in the House Nobody wants a stranger living in their attic. It's creepy, it's weird, and it's hard to believe that a stranger living in your attic isn't peeping at you through the cracks in the floor. Because guess what? They almost certainly are. What happened to a woman named Amber Dawn was so unusual it makes the story almost too hard to believe. It all happened after she moved into her new apartment. For six months, she endured some very strange happenings, which she had first mistook for some kind of paranormal activity. Footsteps thumping around in the attic, doors opening and closing all on their own, and all kinds of other strange things. She was convinced her house was haunted. It wasn't until one night when Amber was in the bathtub, relaxing because she felt kind of sick that day, that she realized someone else was living in the house with her. She was lying in the bathtub, looking up at the ceiling, when she realized there was somebody looking back at her through the attic floorboards. She had a peeper. Amber calmly got out of the bathtub, put on her robe, and escaped the house to call the police. However, whoever had been living in her house must have known the jig was up, as he was gone by the time the police arrived. To this day, Amber still has no idea who was living in her attic, or why he was watching her through her floorboards. That is definitely creepy. Number 5. Living in the Walls According to American author Grady Hendrix, he had an old man living in the walls of his house as a little boy. So far as the author's story goes, he was 9 years old when he went downstairs one night to discover a man standing in his kitchen. He told his parents about the incident, but they simply assumed it was Grady's active imagination. In the following days, Grady began to notice very strange things going on in the house. He saw eyes watching him from within the air conditioning vents. He noticed things being moved around, and all the while, his parents ignored him, claiming that he was just an over-imaginative child. 
Of course, his parents started to believe him when a bad smell began to infiltrate the house. But it wasn't until maggots began falling from the air conditioning units that his parents really began to believe him. Shortly after, the dead body of a mysterious man was found inside the walls of Grady's house. According to the author himself, the man had set up a foam pad inside Grady's bedroom vent and had been watching him for months before dying of unknown causes. Number 4. Stalker on the Balcony A woman named Hannah had an incredibly uncomfortable encounter recently when she caught a stalker trying to break into her home from her second floor balcony. What's really wild about this incident is that she caught the entire thing on video. She had been recording herself dancing in her home in Maryland when she heard a strange noise. She then heard her balcony door click open. Immediately, she ran to shut the door, but it was too late. A strange man was now standing in her living room, asking her if they were friends. She tried to make the man leave, but he refused. She finally managed to get her phone and began to dial, which scared the man away. The entire thing was captured and uploaded to TikTok. But here's the scary part. The Hangerstown Police Department confirmed that the man who stalked and broke into Hannah's house was named Angel Moises Rodriguez Gomez and had already been arrested on charges of burglary, assault, stalking, and malicious destruction of property. Number 3. Squatter Up Above so what is it with people living in other people's attics? It's kind of bizarre to really even think about. Yet another woman had the experience of her life when she learned of a man secretly living in her attic. This happened in Arlington, Virginia. One night when the woman was living in her house, she heard footsteps coming from her attic. It was the first time she had experienced anything strange in her home. According to NBC Washington, she quickly called her landlord to see if he was using the space for storage, which he sometimes did. This time, though, it turned out he wasn't. They called the police to come and search the attic, and they discovered a 60-year-old man, along with his clothes, some bedding, and a backpack full of stuff living inside the woman's attic. He was charged with unlawful entry, but nobody could determine how long he'd been living in the house or what he was planning to do with the woman who lived there. Number 2. South Carolina Scam Squatters when a woman from South Carolina returned home from holiday, she was rather surprised to discover someone living inside of her house. The woman was 75 years old at the time of the incident, and she found a 22-year-old woman residing inside of her home. But the squatter said she wasn't squatting, but that she had begun to rent the house after responding to a Facebook ad and signing a lease. But here's where the story gets really interesting. This is one of those scams where somebody tells you to send them the first month's rent, and then they'll mail you the keys. This is something that no one in the internet should ever, ever, ever fall for. The scammer claims that they lost the keys, and they tell you to go in through the back door of the house. In this case, it happened that the house actually belonged to someone who wasn't there. The poor senior citizen came home to find the woman totally oblivious and living peacefully inside of her house. The woman who actually owned the house was quite nice about it, though. She gave the young girl a few days to get all her stuff out, and everything worked out in the end. Number 1. Intruder in the Crawl Space Crawl spaces are kind of just creepy on their own. Almost nobody wants to venture down into the crawl space of their house for fear of being eaten by ghosts or maybe even spiders. So it makes sense that Velma Kellen had no idea that she was sharing her home with a total stranger for almost a year. There were some signs throughout the months preceding her discovery of the stranger, such as the backyard gate being left open, a strange smell permeating the house, and an unexplainable amount of coldness inside of her home. It was actually the coldness that had Velma call a furnace repairman. The repairman crawled down into the crawl space to see where the heat was escaping, and that was when the discovery was made. It turned out that somebody had made their home inside of the vents connected to the furnace in the crawl space. The intruder had cut the heating duct to better warm himself. Luckily for him, though, he wasn't there when the repairman arrived. Velma locked her crawl space and made it inaccessible, and as of yet, she has not had any more problems. Mount Everest is one of the most dangerous places on Earth for a person to go. It's cold, it's the world's highest peak, and there isn't much oxygen available when you start to get up high. But even worse than trying to climb the world's most dangerous mountain is being abandoned upon it. Nobody wants to be abandoned really anywhere, never mind near the peak of Everest. But that's exactly what happened to Lincoln Hall. After he and his teammates reached the peak of Everest, they began the treacherous descent. It was at 28,000 feet when Hall's feet refused to move, and he said that he needed to go to sleep. Unbeknownst to him, he was suffering from cerebral edema, which is basically altitude sickness. His brain was swollen and he was sick, and unfortunately the rest of Hall's group went on without him, leaving him in the care of two Sherpas. 
but after nine hours, the Sherpas were forced to leave Hall behind on the side of the mountain. They literally just abandoned him on the mountain. Less than 60 feet away and just a few hours before, a German hiker suffered similar issues before he collapsed and died. The next morning, Lincoln Hall was found by a group of friends who were on their way to the summit. He was disoriented, he had frostbite, and he was just sitting on a platform of snow and ice completely out of it. Rather than reach the top, the group of friends sacrificed the $20,000 they'd each paid to make the journey to go down and rescue Lincoln Hall. Thanks to them, Hall escaped the mountain with his life, even after being abandoned. Number 9. Green Boots There have been a lot of people die on Everest. But what a lot of people don't know is that the bodies of the deceased usually remain there on the mountain. The most famous of all the dead bodies strewn through the snow and ice of the deadly Tower of Rock and Stone is Green Boots. Almost everyone trying to reach the top of Everest must pass Green Boots on their way to the summit. So why is this guy called Green Boots? Well, it's because of his extremely bright green boots. He's a very distinct corpse that has yet to be removed since he was left there abandoned in 1996. Green Boots' real name is likely Tse Wong Pal Jor, or at least it's one of his teammates. Nobody knows the man's identity for sure. Most experts are fairly certain he was a 28-year-old officer with the Indian-Tibetan border police who grew up in a village at the base of the Himalayas. In 1996, he was selected to be part of a team that would be the first Indians to reach the very top of Everest from its north side. Unfortunately, almost nobody in the expedition returned. Just one man made it back from the cruelty of the mountain in 1996. And believe it or not, Green Boots and the rest of the expedition abandoned the only survivor of the mission. Most of the group pushed on, even through worsening weather, thus abandoning Harbhajan Singh on the side of the mountain. Even though the rest of the group reached the summit, they all died afterward in a horrible blizzard. The guy they abandoned was the only one who made it to safety. And Se Wong, aka Green Boots, is still on the mountain all these years later. Number 8. Too Many Climbers Get this, there are too many people climbing Mount Everest. 2019 turned into one of the deadliest years in the mountain's history. All because of dangerous overcrowding with climbers that don't have the necessary experience. There are so many people climbing Mount Everest that on a clear day during peak season, there's actually a lineup of people trying to reach the top, which resulted in 11 people dying in the 2019 season. It was the highest number of deaths since 2015. Because of all the people wishing to stand at the top of the world, some of them end up dying on the way. According to PBS, climbers in 2019 were forced to step over the bodies of abandoned climbers on their way to the top. People literally run out of oxygen, die just before the summit, and other tourists are forced to step over their abandoned corpses. Mount Everest has turned into an absolute nightmare of a place. Do you know of anyone who has successfully scaled Mount Everest? Or any other world-class peaks? Do they have some incredible stories, or maybe you have some? Tell me about your personal experiences, or theirs, with Everest in the comments section below. Then be sure to subscribe to WorldList if you haven't already for more incredible videos just like this one. Number 7. George Mallory George Mallory died on the north face of Mount Everest on June 8, 1924. He was a British mountaineer who was leading one of the first ever expeditions to the top of the mountain when he disappeared and was subsequently abandoned. Back in the 1920s, George Mallory was one of the most famous disappearances in the world. This guy had served during World War I, and he was a teacher in England, and he had even been to the mountain before. It was his third expedition in 1924 when Mallory went missing. Him and another hiker were never seen from again after trying to reach the summit from their last camp at 26,800 feet. The rest of the climbers had no choice but to descend the mountain without both men. The fate of the climbers was then debated for nearly 80 years. An axe belonging to one of the men was found at 27,700 feet. Then an oxygen canister from the 1920s was discovered in 1991 on the mountain. In 1999, George Mallory's body was finally discovered at 26,760 feet. It was determined that he had died from a fall, and it's unclear whether he had reached the peak before tumbling to his death. But in any case, he was one of the first famous deaths on Everest, and his body is still on the mountain even today. Number 6. David Sharp David Sharp froze to death alongside Green Boots, another famous death on Everest back in 2006. His death was extremely tragic, and the disturbing situation surrounding his demise sparked quite a bit of controversy over the years. This is because at least 40 climbers passed David Sharp's body on their way either up or down Everest. 
but they didn't pass a dead man, they passed David Sharp as he lay dying. 40 people looked at him and decided it wasn't even worth to check and see if he was alive, and they left him abandoned inside the cave near another corpse. Unfortunately, even if someone had noticed David dying, they probably couldn't have saved him. This was in the death zone, about 26,000 feet, and it's believed that nobody can be rescued beyond that point when stricken by altitude sickness and frostbite. His body was finally pulled out of the cave by a group of climbers who discovered him, but by then there was nothing that could be done. Like many others, David's body is still half buried beneath the snow on the mountain he failed to climb. Number 5. Seamus Lawless Seamus Lawless was an Irish climber who fell to his death thanks to a gust of wind near the top of Mount Everest. He wasn't exactly abandoned, but his story is so bizarre that you really do need to hear it. Not only did Seamus get blown off Mount Everest, but it happened after he had unclipped from a safety harness and decided to urinate off the side of the mountain. According to the Irish Post, this happened while Seamus was descending from the summit of Mount Everest, just 600 feet from his camp. Nobody saw Seamus die, and his friends searched for him until it got dark, but unfortunately, he has been presumed dead. It just goes to show that even trying to use the bathroom on the deadliest mountain in the world can also lead to disaster. Number 4. Sherpa Deaths a lot of people assume that all the deaths on Everest come from climbers, but in fact, about one-third of all Everest deaths are Sherpas. According to NPR, the Sherpas who guide foreigners to the top of the mountain carry the food and the tents, and they do all the hard work. And they're usually the ones that get abandoned on the mountain to die. Out of over 300 people who've died on Everest, about 100 of them have been Sherpas. Seven Sherpas died on the first summit attempt back in 1922, while an avalanche took 16 of them in 2014. Sherpas climb up and down Mount Everest constantly, and almost every Sherpa has had a friend they've been forced to abandon on the mountain because of an unfortunate act of nature. When someone is beyond the saving point, there's no choice but to leave them behind in the snow. That's the cold, hard truth of Everest. Number 3. Is Sleeping Beauty One of the most famous deaths to ever occur on Mount Everest was a woman named Frances Arsentiev, popularly known as Sleeping Beauty. She perished on the mountain while trying to ascend to the summit in 1998. There are no pictures available of her position on Everest, but she's still one of the most popular figures who ever died on the mountain. It all happened on May 22, 1998, after she became the first American woman to ever reach the summit of Everest without needing supplemental oxygen. But it's the way Francis reached the top that made her famous. She'd been climbing the mountain with her husband when they reached Camp 6 and got stuck. They were at 28,000 feet and almost at the top. The weather prevented them from reaching the summit or from going down, causing them to stay three nights in the dead zone. After spending so much time in the most dangerous place on the mountain, they finally decided to go back to the main base camp. But Francis and her husband got separated. Her husband reached the camp only to realize that his wife had not returned. She was nowhere to be found. It wasn't until the next day that a team of climbers found her on the peak. She was nearly unconscious, badly frostbitten, and basically paralyzed. The team helped her down as far as they could, but were forced to abandon her because they were running out of oxygen. News eventually reached her husband, and he was able to find her, but she was too far gone. She ended up going to sleep in the cold and never waking up again. As for her husband, well, he fell to his death while trying to save Francie's life, and his body was found a year later. She's now known as Sleeping Beauty because when she was first discovered, her skin was so white and waxy that she looked like the legendary fairy tale character. Number 2. Body Removal In 2004, three climbers from Korea perished while trying to climb Mount Everest. As you know by now, getting bodies off the mountain is no easy feat. Most bodies are left abandoned on the mountain and never removed. But after the three Korean climbers died, there was a massive outcry over the lack of effort to not only save their lives, but to preserve their bodies. In 2005, 14 Koreans went on an expedition to Mount Everest to bring the bodies back down the mountain. But it was an absolute disaster. Only one body was found, still clipped to the rescue line at 28,700 feet. After many hours of extreme effort, the team of 14 people were only able to move the dead body 500 feet. They had to give up. The team covered the body with rocks, conducted a small ceremony, then went back down the mountain without bringing any bodies with them. This just goes to show how absolutely nightmarish it is to try and take anything off Mount Everest. It's very likely that the bodies of the dead will continue to amass as more and more people try to make the climb. Number 1. 
not the deadliest. After hearing all these horror stories, you probably think Mount Everest is the most dangerous mountain on Earth. But according to Business Insider, it's only the 10th most dangerous. There are far more frightening mountains a person can climb, and many of them have significantly higher fatality rates. For example, K2, which is the second tallest mountain in the world, is even more perilous. It's only 778 feet shorter than Everest, and yet between 1906 and 2008, only 264 people have reached its peak. Out of those brave climbers, 24 of them died coming back down. The mountain has a fatality rate of 29%. In comparison, out of the 3,648 climbers who have reached the peak of Mount Everest, only 56 of them didn't make it down. NASA reported in 2012 that Everest only has a fatality rate of 4%. In 2008, a group of 25 mountain climbers tried to reach the summit of K2. During that attempt, Insider Magazine reported that 11 climbers from seven different countries died within just 24 hours and were abandoned on the mountain. That's how savage trying to climb K2 really is. Water slides are some of the most dangerous amusement features in the world. If you have a fear of skydiving, bungee jumping, or something similar, you should know that water slides are infinitely more dangerous. For example, in 2020, a young girl was left crying in pain and bleeding everywhere after a horrifying accident at a Dreamworld theme park. This girl was only eight years old when she was mangled on a water slide at this Australian theme park. She and her siblings went down the ride totally fine, but the girl emerged at the bottom in a pool of blood after the water pressure of the ride was too strong. The family is now considering legal action against the park. And keep in mind that this is the same Australian theme park where four people died on a ride in October of 2016. They died instantly when two rafts on the Thunder River Rapids ride collided, causing the rafts to overturn into the mechanical ramp. As for the young child who was injured more recently, she was tended to by a paramedic, then taken to the hospital by an ambulance. She will recover, but her injuries are definitely serious enough to seek legal action. Number 9. Spinal Injury Universal Orlando is kind of a scary place. It's supposed to be a place of wonder, and yet people continuously get injured on their rides. In December of 2020, a man from New York who has sued Universal Orlando after being paralyzed on a water slide at their park finally got his complaint settled. According to the court records from Orange County, the case was closed and the claim was amicably resolved. Basically, that means the guy who injured his spine got a really great payday. But it wasn't worth the horror that the man had to go through, though. It all happened on the last day of James Bowen's vacation with his family. While going down the Punga Racer slide, he suffered a spinal compression injury and became paralyzed in the water. He was on the ride with his three little girls when he smashed his head against the wall in the wading pool, causing a violent snap. To this day, the man is still going to physical therapy. His relationship with his family has suffered, and hopefully he was compensated enough by Universal Orlando after claiming the company had performed gross misconduct and negligence. Have you ever gone on a major water slide at a big theme park? How'd it go? Were you terrified? Do you know anyone who was injured on one of these high-speed tubes? Let me know about it in the comments below. Then remember, if you haven't already subscribed to World List, go ahead and do that now. There are more scary and impressive videos coming out very, very soon. Number 8. Action Park Water Slide Almost everyone is familiar with Action Park by now. After the recent film starring Johnny Knoxville, there's been renewed talk about this legendary park. It operated from 1968 to 1996 in New Jersey and was one of the most dangerous theme parks known to mankind. Teenagers loved it for its lack of security. Within its years of operation, there were countless scrapes and bruises and at least six deaths. But here's what a lot of people don't know. Half the deaths that occurred at Action Park came from people drowning inside the wave pool. As for the other three deaths, one came from the luge, and another was a heart attack, and another was someone who got exposed to electrical wiring while on the kayak ride. The myths about kids dying left, right, and center at this park are grossly exaggerated, but yes, the water did kill three people. Then there was the water slide. It was epic, with a cannonball loop so dangerous that even Action Park had to close it after a single summer. The loop was way too tight for anyone to try to get through, and even the employees at the park did not want to ride it. While the loop didn't cause any deaths, it was still a massive disaster. 
Number 7. Stuck Inside a Water Slide You would think that only Homer Simpson could get stuck inside a water slide, but it also happened to a man named Ryan Kelly, who had gotten stuck inside of a water slide support pipe at El Dorado Aquatic Fitness Center in Scottsdale, Arizona. According to the Scottsdale Police Department, the man was discovered when an officer patrolling the area after midnight heard someone screaming for help. The man was then found to be stuck inside of a large steel pipe that supported one of the water slides. The pipe was kind of like a megaphone, amplifying the guy's call for help so the officer actually heard him. Emergency personnel were contacted, and a rescue attempt unfolded. The slide actually had to be taken apart to reach the man's body, which they recovered at around 7 o'clock in the morning. Unfortunately, he had died before they could get him out of the pipe. Exactly how he died is still a mystery, though. But here's the weird part. The guy didn't get stuck going down the water slide. He broke into the center at night by climbing over the fence. Then he climbed into the massive slide and wriggled himself into the support pipe. The police said it was quite an extraordinary feat, and it must have taken the man a great deal of work just to get inside of it. Definitely a weird place to choose to die. Number 6. Inflatable Disaster For a Georgia mother of two, an accident on an inflatable water slide led to tragedy. This woman ended up being paralyzed from the neck down after a freak accident while attending a small gathering with her husband. She was playing with the kids at the party when one of them ended up colliding with her on the inflatable water slide. It wasn't the water slide that paralyzed her, but the impact from the small child. The kid hit her the wrong way and she was instantly paralyzed. She couldn't feel her legs or use her arms and was quickly transported to Memorial Health University Medical Center in Savannah, where she had to undergo neck surgery. It was a total freak accident and just one of those things that nobody could ever see coming. Unfortunately, life has a way of throwing these disturbing and unexpected occurrences at you when you least expect it. No one can be totally safe, no matter how careful they are. Life is full of risks, some that you didn't even know existed. Number 5. From Water Park to Life Support Nobody expects their trip to the water park to end with them on a life support machine. But this is exactly what happened when a British man on holiday with his girlfriend broke his neck on a water slide in Spain. The guy's name is David, and he was only 23 years old when he snapped two of the vertebrae in his neck and severely injured his spinal cord. It happened when he plunged head first down the famous water slide at Aqualandia Water Park in Benidorm. In retrospect, going down major water slides head first is really a huge risk factor and it should probably be avoided. He went down the slide with his girlfriend, but only one of them came out all right. Imagine the horror she must have felt when coming off the slide and looking over to see her boyfriend crippled. There's even vivid video footage of the event, and you can see David's head snap forward as he hits the water. It was a total freak accident, and it's left him in a Spanish hospital paralyzed from the chest down and being kept alive by a life support unit. And doctors are now saying that David may be paralyzed for the rest of his life. Talk about a vacation gone wrong. Number 4. Water Slide Decapitation this is undoubtedly the most brutal story I've ever heard regarding a water slide accident, and it's really not for the squeamish. A young boy, only 10 years old, was decapitated during the most dramatic water slide incident ever recorded. This water slide was so dangerous that according to The Sun, the designer of the slide said that during testing he didn't know if it was possible to survive the ride. That's how insanely dangerous it was right from the beginning. And you may even have heard of it. The ride is called the Verrucht Water Slide, and it's located in the Schlitterbahn theme park in Kansas City. It was in August of 2016 that Caleb Schwab was decapitated on this very ride. There's even footage that shows the raft going airborne as it flew over the hump of the slide. The raft hit a metal pole that supported a safety net, and Caleb was decapitated and killed instantly. It's extremely tragic, and the ride has since been closed. But really, should it have ever opened in the first place? The slide was 168 feet and the tallest in the world, and gained a lot of attention in the US when it opened in July of 2014. In hindsight, it was clearly a bad idea. This is one instance where better safety regulation would have put a stop to this slide before it ever even got built, and then saved this young boy's life. Number 3. The Emerald Plunge Slide the Emerald Plunge Slide was the site of a grisly accident in the small city of Dublin, California. During Memorial Day weekend in 2017, a 10-year-old boy was seriously injured after hydroplaning off the end of the slide. The incident was caught on camera and it was pretty horrific. 
The kid was too light for the slide and ended up skimming off the edge and suffering major injuries to his back when he landed. The family sued for $2.5 million in damages and recently settled with the manufacturer of the slide. But what's really crazy is that it actually reopened. The slide was closed for about a year and then opened up as if nothing ever happened. The city of Dublin claims the slide is now safe to use, but I guess we won't really know until and unless another poor young child is injured. Number 2. Chinese Theme Park Debacle In China, faulty equipment caused a massive tsunami at a water park that injured 44 different people. This didn't technically happen on a water slide, but it's still an absolutely crazy example of what can go wrong at any water park. All 44 of the injured people were rushed to hospital after an enormous tsunami swept through the pool at a local resort. According to the Chinese government, five people had to remain in hospital because of their injuries, but they were in stable condition, while others were able to go home. You might even remember this incident from 2019 as it made a pretty big impact on social media platforms worldwide. You can see in the video uploaded online that the wave starts out normal and then gets enormous. You can hear people screaming. You can see bodies being thrown this way and that, and then the video ends. The initial investigation into this incident revealed that a power cut somehow damaged the equipment in the control room for the wave pool, causing the huge tsunami to crash down upon those just trying to relax and enjoy their vacation. Number 1. Final Destination in Argentina It seems that no matter where you go in the world, you're not really safe from deadly water slides. In Argentina, a couple were hospitalized after flying off a broken water slide at the Aquapolis Water Park in the city of Mar del Plata. The couple were on a rubber ring when the incident occurred. Before they reached the end of the slide, the giant rubber ring hit the edge of the slide and caused it to break, which flung the couple off into the open air, where they crash-landed and received serious injuries. The couple were taken to hospital in an ambulance, where the woman received five stitches on her head and her boyfriend had to stay in the hospital and received several stitches because of a huge injury on his leg. After the incident, the water park refused to comment and nothing was ever done to compensate the couple. This is unfortunate considering the accident was entirely the fault of the park. The slide literally broke and caused the people to nearly die. But again, this is just another lesson about how horribly dangerous water parks and slides can be, so please stay safe out there. Do you think theme parks should be forced to shut down rides when they injure people? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thanks for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to Worldlist for all the latest and greatest content.